Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, Union Learn's latest webinar. My name's Adrian Ryan, and I work for Union Learn. And today I'm joined by Ida Riddell and Sam Marks, who will introduce themselves later on. Firstly, um, some housekeeping. As you'll see down one side of your screen, there is a chat, uh, a chat uh, text box. You can put some comments already. People are saying hello to each other. It's great to see some familiar faces in there. Um, if you want to ask a question, you'll see down the bottom, there's a little button called, and it says, ask a question. Please try and put your questions in there. It makes it easier for us then to be able to answer the questions rather than scroll through all the, all the hellos and welcomes that you're putting down the side and uh, other great links. Please feel free to also post any links or anything that's uh, in, that may be of interest to other people. And what I'll do now is I will hand over to Ivor, who will introduce himself, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get cracking on, the, on the, the main body of the actual webinar. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, oh, got a little bit of feedback there, Adrian. I'm not sure what's going on there. So, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll soldier on. Um, so, as Adrian said, my name's Ivor Riddell, uh, and I work with RMT Learning uh, as a lead learning organiser. Uh, my background is in uh, the child protection and online safety uh, area is that I've been volunteering with the Sea Cadets for about 25 years. And for about 12 of those, uh, one of my jobs has been to deliver presentations to young people, children and, and adults, care parents and carers around internet safety uh, based on the child exploitation online protection teams uh, education program and um, so that, that's where I come from that, that's, so that's, that's basically what I'm going to do first of all today is in a minute I'm going to share a screen with a PowerPoint talk you through some of the issues around what uh, parents worry about and think about and what the children actually do just sort of break down some of those myths uh, promote uh, the, the internet as a, as a good thing it's not a bad thing but it does have risks and we need to be aware of those risks and, and how we can deal with those and talk to our children about them. So without further ado, I shall play with the technology. Just bear with me. Okay. Oh, that's sharing. Fabulous. Okay, so this, this particular presentation is aimed at parents and carers with primary age children, but most of the stuff is, is still relevant for, for the older children. But there is, there are, sorry, there are other presentations uh, which um, talk about older children and there are other presentations that talk about other parents' concerns. There's one around uh, live streaming, which is a new hot topic. And so there's, there's, there's lots on there, and there's lots of resources which we'll talk about as we go through. And I'll just crack on. So uh, this presentation has been developed by uh, TIOP uh, Education Team at the National Crime Agency. Uh, I think you know it's a national education program that most, most of the kids will have heard about. Uh, and it's dedicated to keeping children safe from sexual abuse and exploitation online and offline. So at the NCA CEOP, which is National Crime Agency Child Exploitation Online Protection Team, that's not an interesting to say after two cups of tea. Uh, they are a multidisciplinary child protection centre staffed by law enforcement officers, social workers, education officers, intelligence officers, child psychologists and, and a whole host of other people, all experts in their in their field. So we'll talk about uh, some of the links to the website that are available as we go further on. But what we're going to do today is choosing online, uh, just a, a general view, live streaming and gaming, what can you do? Uh, think you know resources for primary school children, uh, and again, we'll point you to the ones for parents and carers and, and for, for older children as well. And, and also about how to report incidents uh, to the NCA CEOP, uh, which is a really important part of the programme, is about encouraging people to use the link to report 
abuse or suspected abuse online. So I think, you know, is the National Education Programme, as I said, for the NTAC, and it provides professionals with resources to teach children and young people about sexual abuse online and covers the following age ranges, as you can see there, from 7, 8 to 10, 11 to 13, 14 plus, and of course, parents and carers. And actually, I think one of the key things about the whole programme is it doesn't talk down to children. Uh, the, the presentation and the information is all age appropriate so that it talks at them and engages with them and asks them to ask them to feedback. Ivor? Yeah, sorry. Uh, Ivor, sorry, you're getting, you're, you're, there seems to be an issue with your mic at the moment. Uh, can you just, um, you haven't got more than one window open, have you? Mm, no. Sorry. I'll, no. Just, I'll just check. We'll just check that. But no, I'm not really sure or not. Oh, I'm on that's no let's try it let's try going back. is that better no i'm still getting feedback yeah where that's coming from maybe. what right. how about does it help no no. Um, okay. Try again, Ivan. Let's see how, see how it is now. Where are we? I don't know, mate. I don't know what it is. Is it just it's got like a ripple? Right. I haven't got anything else open at all. Right. Okay. What what I'll what I'll do is um I'll bring if I if I bring Sam in, can, Sam, are you okay to come in? And then what I'll do is I'll get I I'll get Ivor to I'll try and take Ivor out and put him back on again in the second. Is that yeah. okay, Sam? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Can everyone hear me? Okay? Yeah. 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 Fantastic. All right. I'll give a quick introduction to me then while we're waiting. Um, so uh, my name's Sam Marks. I'm actually from uh, NCA SEOP, uh, 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 the Child Exploitation Online Protection Centre. I'm one of the education managers there. So uh, my team works to create the resources for professionals um, and develop the different programmes for young people. So um Hopefully, uh, at the end, we can have a, a quick catch up on what we've been doing as a team and also um, answer any questions which uh, might come up. And uh, I noticed that there's already one question. Um, so while we're waiting for uh, Ivor and um, to sort out his sound, maybe without stealing Ivor's thunder there, because he will talk a little bit about the importance of using a variety of things to help keep children safe. One of the questions we've had asked already is, is there a reliable nanny system you can install to ensure your children are not going on to places they shouldn't, as parental controls are not always reliable? And this is always, I think this is a question I, uh, so I've been working in online safety for about 15 years and it definitely comes up a lot. Um, there is no such thing as technology which will help do everything because just like with all other parenting, it's a mixture of using the tools we have available as well as talking to our children um, and kind of managing some of those nuances. But I would say parental controls are really good at managing content provided it's um, been uh, provided it's been registered as over 18 or under 18. There are some really good parenting tools, um, which are apps that you can get, which you download onto your phone and you can see what your children uh, might be downloading. And there are lots available. So most of the mobile service providers so samsung apple um have these kind of parenting apps you can install on your own device alongside that of your child um disney now have a tool called circle where you can manage what people are doing 
some of the information security systems. Uh, so, for example, people like Kapersky who do like security on your device, often they will have um, some tools available for children. And those parenting apps are designed so that, and I, I like to describe them a little bit like tr the kind of stabilizers for a bicycle, is that they help a child to sort of navigate that space with you watching them so the idea is is when they're younger and they're getting their first device then it's a really good way for them to ask permission from you as a parent so for example if they wanted to download an app um, you would get a notification to say um, you know my child your child wants to download it are you okay with that some of those apps um, will let you see what they're messaging and all of those, you know, kind of what they're sharing. Again, it depends on what the relationship is like with your child. And also, as they get older, you want to develop their uh, independence. So if you are monitoring them all the time, then, then that trust, obviously, um, is not there so it's really important to balance using those technical tools with having that conversation getting them to show you how they stay safe helping them to feel that you are someone that they can come to um so there's lots on the market if you even just googled like parental control uh, parental tools or parental monitoring you'll see all sorts of um different tools available um one of the places i would say i'm going to put this in the email chat box is if you want to have a look at the, some of the uh, tools available. Uh, Internet Matters, uh, I know, has reviewed uh, some of those things. Um, and they are a good place to go. Uh, if some of you, let me just type in here for you. Uh, so they are a good place to go. They have lots of uh, guidance for parents, um, additionally around some of the practical things that people can do, as well as setting um, parental controls. How are we doing there, gentlemen? Yep, we've got Ivor back. So what I'll do is I'll try and bring Ivor back in now. <laughs> well, I'll try to, he's just disappeared again. Oh, I was just disappeared again. <laughs> He's disappeared again. Right. Okay. That's all right. These are the things that happen. <laughs> right, uh, Sam. If I'm just wondering if you can take. I we, continue. We, we, yeah, just carry on. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see where I we'll see. Yeah. I'll come back in a minute. No worries. If you ask Ivor uh, to email across his. Um, uh, slides that maybe we could present them for him as well and help him out. Um, um, yeah. But yes, I will continue. I will do that. Um, so one of the things that we've been doing uh, at uh, CIOP this since the end of March is um, kits. Uh, so we've had our own campaign. Uh, it's called um, hashtag uh, online safety at home. Ooh my uh, thing's not going through. Um, and what we've been doing is every two weeks, we have been creating 15 minute activities uh, for parents because we know, and as well as supporting um, their children with their work, they're finding that they're online a lot more than they were before. Right. Apologies, everyone. We appear to have um, lost Sam there as well. I think one of the big issues that we've actually got at the moment is a big issue that we've got at the moment is the actual bandwidth of a lot of people actually trying to um, use the internet for for this type of event at, all at one time. Um, right. What what I'll do is I'll try and bring. Either back in. Okay. Right. 
Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, so Ivor. I will bring you. Ivor will bring you back in now. Right. Okay. That sounds better. Oh, hi everyone. Sorry about all that. Uh, we have a technical issue. Hopefully, it's resolved. Uh, just bring the PowerPoint back up. Okay. Uh, so, can we all see that on the screen, Adrian? Adrian. We you can just click on to share screen, either. That's that's great. I thought I had done. I, th I thought I had done. Sorry, that's what I was just saying. Uh, hang, give me a second. This is all very technical stuff. This. Okay, here we are. Share. Right, so it should come up. Hopefully. Ah, here we are. Not sure what's going on there. Okay, so we're sharing. Good. Okay. Right. So here we are again. So as I was saying, it, it's all age appropriate, the, the resources, etc. And and there's masses of stuff. There's loads of short films which you can use to stimulate conversation with your children and young people uh, around the areas of uh, what happens on the internet, what they like, what they don't like, and, and so on. So just bear with me while I catch up with myself. Um, so the important thing, of course, is communication. Uh, and I'm sure we all understand that already. But actually taking five or ten minutes just to talk to your child, um, to just find a, a decent time and place, whether you're sitting around the table at dinner, if you do that, or... Uh, you're sitting there watching something specific on the telly that might even introduce the issue of um, um, online safety, etc. Or, or when they finish the homework, any time. It doesn't matter what time it is. Just making five or ten minutes to sit down and have a quiet chat with one or, or a couple of your children at the same time. And, and think about how you're going to introduce the subject. Again, there may be something comes up on the telly, quite often things like EastEnders and, and stuff like that. They have um, short storylines around issues such as online safety and maybe use that as a way of saying, oh, so how do you stay safe online? What, what do you know about staying safe online? And you might be surprised at how many young people aren't that clued up. We think they're really clued up about the Internet and how to use the Internet, etc. But they're, they're very clued up on how to use certain things on there, a bit like adults really at work. Um, but they don't have an overall view and it's really important that they, they have that, um, well, certainly have that understanding. So just explain any worries that you have without alarming them and without seeming judgmental, obviously. Uh, just say, well, I've, I've heard this, you know, what what do you think? Um, as it says, says there, don't listen, don't judge, and actually learn because there's an awful lot they can teach you. My children, grandchildren are teaching me all the time. Uh, sometimes I don't want to know it, but they're teaching me. So um, just ask them where they go online, what, what sort of sites do they look at. You might already know some of them, but you may not know all of them. What do they like particularly? Um, and more importantly, what don't they like? You know, are, are, they, uh, are they making the right choices, those right decisions? Make sure they know they can come home, they can come to you if there's a problem. Just reassure them that you won't judge them, you won't um, take their equipment off them, but it's important that they do talk. Okay, so just going to go through a very, very short um, film here. Now, there are some issues with sound on, on the Crowdcast at the moment, um, so there, there will be no sound with this, but it's basically a, a Romeo and Juliet by text. It's a very short film, just a little bit of fun, I suppose, but it kind of points home the, the, the issues that there are faced with by children using text and social media. So here we go.
Oh, there you go. Uh, if you kept up with that, because it's quite fast moving, um, it, it's basically just the story of Romeo and Juliet uh, through text. And of course, the final really important part of the message didn't get through. Um, how many times has that happened on when you're texting? And the most frustrating thing is when it says fail to send and you can't work out why. Uh, just just on, on that, uh, just a quick reminder to people about parental controls. They're an important first step to, to help and protect your child online, uh, but they're not the only solution uh, to staying safe uh, and you shouldn't rely on them alone to, to help them stay safe. The best way to do that is to talk to your children, uh, encourage responsible behaviour and, and, and I say, just make sure that you keep that contact and that communication going. Ooh, slide there. So parents and carers uh, have told uh, NCA CIOP that they can feel overwhelmed by the internet. Uh, I've certainly felt like that sometimes, and I use it quite a lot. The emergence of new apps and games every day can make the internet feel vast and ever-changing. But the reality is there are actually only a limited number of functions that apps and games can have. So we're just going to talk a little bit about those now. So viewing is the first one. You'll see the app there for viewing is just basically an eye. <clears throat> and it just says, um, unfortunately, it can be easy for children to come across inappropriate sexual or violent content online. Most apps and games, but not all, include privacy and security settings that allow you to control what content can be seen and shared. In addition, tools such as parental controls and filters can help to manage a child's online activities and what they're exposed to. However, these are never totally fail safe. What is vital is open and ongoing conversations. As I said earlier, that communication is so important. So sharing, you see the, uh, the icon there for sharing. I'm sure we've all seen that before. It's all too easy for children to come. Sorry, it's, it's, it's a key part of our education with children is talking to them about what they say and share online. It's easy to share things online that we wouldn't do face to face. And it's important to talk to children about safe sharing. And I'm sure we've all come across that in, in, in on Facebook and, and Twitter and things like that, where people you think you know put some awful stuff online and you, you just wouldn't think that they would do that. Uh, but actually they do when, when, when they're not staring, if they would never say it to your face in a million years, but when they're online, they get something in them and they just have to post this, this thing, uh, whatever it is, whether it's racist or, or homophobic or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, so it's really important that we understand what people are sharing and how they're doing that. Uh, chatting. We all like to chat with our friends, um, but what, what are the children chatting about and what are they saying? Meeting new people on the internet can be fun and appealing for children. There are lots of online apps and communities that can be educational and supportive for them. However, this opens opportunities for adults to contact children online. No matter how young your child is, if they're using a device that has the internet, it's important to talk to them about people who contact them online. Just talk about their friends. So who are your friends online? Who are you talking to at the moment? anyone you're not sure of. Some people online genuinely just want to chat or are friends, but others may put pressure on children to manipulate them. And, and it's a very subtle process. These people, uh, we, 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 we often think about people like this as being dirty old men with Max, and actually not a lot of them are very, very intelligent people and they know how to use the internet and they know how to persuade and, and cajole people into doing things that they wouldn't normally think is okay. But we do have to be aware that they are a very small minority of people, but they're out there, and we, we do need to be able to, to look at that and talk to our children about it. So which apps should you be concerned about? Well, there are no apps and games that are more or less dangerous or risky. Uh, people who want to groom will use any sites or services which children use. And that's certainly seen uh, a development with, um, I don't think it's uh, Xbox and things like that, where they've got interactive play now. And there are there are safeguards on there, but we just need to be aware who our children are talking to. Okay, I'm talking a little bit about live streaming, um, so which is basically just broadcasting live videos over the internet. They're unmoderated and unpredictable. 
Um, I think the latest one is TikTok. You see uh, the latest flavour of the month. Uh, and some of the stuff on there, I must admit, my kids have shown it to me, and it's, it's quite funny. But uh, it can also be used for not very nice purposes. But they are hugely popular with primary age children. Uh, and I often see my granddaughter sitting on the sofa, chuckling away to herself, looking at people doing mad dances and, and all sorts of stuff like that. And they have a potentially huge, huge audience because they're very quick. People can look at them really quickly. So they're really popular. Everybody says, oh, have you seen this? And they share it. And, and the dangers are out there. But we just need to be aware of those dangers uh, and not overreact. Our children might not understand the risk of broadcasting to strangers, young children, especially the vulnerable, uh, if they're vulnerable to pressure and manipulation. And, and we all know some children are like that. Some are easier to, to uh, persuade to do things than others. But so it's just, again, it's important about that communication, about talking to your children, finding that time to actually go through it with them. And if you want to use some of the resources that think you know you offer to actually help that, uh, pres that, that conversation go forward. But as I said, offenders are, are, very, are very clever people and uh, they use flattery, threats, dares and tricks, just like most parents, I guess. <laughs> Um, or post, post multiple comments in order to pressurise a young person to do inappropriate things on camera. And uh, obviously we just need to understand that and whilst not be panicked to make sure that we take proper precautions. So online gaming. It's a type of social network. Many games have a chat function enabling users to interact with one another. As I was saying about Xbox and, and other other products are available, I believe. <clears throat> Often the communication within gaming is to coordinate multiplayer ta game tactics, whatever that means. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a gamer, I must admit. Although it can be just to chat as gamers play. The messages can take the form of instant messenger or voice over internet protocol, VoIP. It's another one I've learned recently, which allows gamers to talk to one another, usually through a headset in a group conversation during the game. Some game consoles also allow young people to leave voice messages for other users and to chat when a game is not in play. So it's just important that we're aware of that and we make sure that children understand that those are great tools, but they need to be careful. So building relationships over gaming is, is quite a key one, actually. As, as, as with other social networks, it can present a risk to children and uh, a lot of adults out there who are gaming and um, it's quite an easy way to, to start breaking down that conversation with a child online and to start befriending them. And then they start to ask them to, to go off grid and, and talk to them elsewhere. I'm, I'm making this sound awful, but it, it, it's, it's, it's a rare occurrence, uh, but it does happen. And we just need to understand that it happens out there. OK, so what can you do? As I said earlier, it's all about communication, really. Just talk to your child about their life online, what they do, who they talk to, what their favourite sites are. Is there anything that they don't like? Um, don't threaten to take away the PS2 because what they'll do is they'll, they'll just hide it from you. So um, never make a threat unless you're prepared to carry it out. And also be aware of the consequences of doing that in that it could actually uh, split you away or break up that communication between you. So maybe take some preemptive steps by creating a family agreement and regularly looking at that and saying, are you still happy with what we've agreed? Maybe I, mean, I know uh, my children all have agreements with their children uh, about uh, the amount of time they can spend online, uh, where, where they can actually do that. It's, it's got to be in a room with other people. They can't go into their bedrooms and do it on their own, things like that. Um, and again, making sure that uh, the proper protocols are, are followed. Certainly, young uh, primary age children should only be live streaming and gaming in public rooms. So they mustn't be going off grid and, and talking to other people. Just keep reinforcing that with them. Use parental controls. I said they're quite handy. You can, you can limit time use. You can limit access to different sites. Um, and I, th I think you can, have, you can actually, some, some of the parent controls, you can actually draw down reports although you're kind of getting into a little bit of big brother there. So whether you want to do that or not, it's entirely up to you as a parent um, and, and report any concerns 
to the local police, SEA or NSPCC. Uh, and don't think that you're wasting their time. They will always take your concerns seriously and they will do their best to support you and help you. And there are a lot of easy ways to make those reports. So some more resources out there for you uh, online at Think You Know. So that's uh, www.thinkyouknow.co.uk. Um, to go on there, there's a whole menu of stuff. There are films, uh, advice and guidance about having a chat, um, find out what the latest live streaming things are happening and, and uh, how you can deal with those. Uh, look at how online grooming actually works. There's a couple of really good uh, short videos on there about um, how that works and about the work that SEOP and the NCA do uh, around that. Um, supporting a child who's been sexually abused. So it's about that the language that you use when you first start talking to that child. Uh, and if they do make a disclosure, what to do about that and, and not to uh, press them too hard, but to make sure they know they're loved and they're, they're, they will be protected and somehow we'll sort that out. Okay, it says they're uh, using parental controls, a lot of guidance on how to use parental controls, uh, which is quite important with uh, technology. Okay, so lots of help and advice for families in a digital world. Um, and, and it's there for you to use around games, apps and tech, parenting, safety and settings, relationships and sex, education of the future, health and well-being. These are all conversations we should all be having with our children anyway. And what this what this program does is, is actually help you to facilitate those uh, those conversations and, and keep that communication. Okay, so reporting, uh, you may have seen uh, the click CIOP, uh, the, the eye on the two legs. Uh, it's actually, I think it's supposed to be a man with his hands or a woman with their hands above their head, but it looks like an eye, which is a very clever logo. And most of the responsible websites will actually have that on every page somewhere within, within that page so that anyone can instantly just go to that button, click on it, and it will take to a link where you can report something you're concerned about or not happy about. Uh, there are other other logos, uh, probably a bit more child friendly to look at. Uh, there's lots of advice for people if, if they're up there personally worried about online sexual abuse, about what they can do and how they can report it. Um, so there's lots and lots of stuff out there online that people can do. And just finally, cyberbullying. Um, should not be reported to the NCA CIOP as it falls outside their remit. So if you've got children who uh, are suffering or you come across children who are suffering from cyberbullying, um, the uh, children and young people should be directed to speak to an adult they trust uh, or refer to Childline. Uh, and that, that's, that's actually the correct way to go because they're better set up to deal with it. CIOP and, and the National Crime Agency are more uh, around online abuse uh, of, of a sexual nature or criminal nature. So just, just so you're aware of that. And then finally, just staying up to date, these are some of the links. Uh, they will be going up in the side part if they haven't already. And uh, you can just click on those links and have a look, have a browse around and see what you think, because there's some really, really good stuff there. I, I've, so I've been using Think You Know materials for a long time now. And I've engaged with thousands of children uh, around child safety online. And, and it's it's just a really great thing to do. Uh, so as I say at the end of Crime Watch, um, don't have nightmares. Um, it's still quite safe out there. Thank you. OK, so now I'm going to hand over to Samantha. Adrian. Oh, yeah, thanks. I've referenced some really, really good information in there. Um, Lisa has asked if we could have if the presentation could be sent out. I'm not sure what the rules are around the presentations that are CEO calls. Yeah, yeah, we so can do. That's yeah, fine. You can do. That's great. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Ivor. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do now, hopefully, we're going to we're going to move over back to Sam, who's introduced herself already, and um, and then she's going to carry on with a little bit of the presentation around what, what CEO is actually doing now. So I'll do that now.
Sorry, it appears to be having a problem with Sam's mic. We had this problem earlier and we thought we'd resolved it. <laughs> um, Sam's just going to go back out and come back in. Ivor, could you touch on some of the um, information around adults as well? I mean, scams. Have you got some information on that? Because normally when we look at when we, we've seen a lot around children, but also I think there's also vulnerable adults. And there's mm. also um, people who might, with, with the pandemic and the lockdown, we've seen a lot of people who are now using IT who are not completely, uh, how we put it, um, comfortable with it. And they've had to find mm. ways of using IT now that they've not done before. And they also are vulnerable and susceptible to scams and to people actually trying to um, hack them or they'll, they'll see emails or see texts. Mm. Any, any advice around that that you could give out for people? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole world of, of different things there. But, I mean, certainly I'm sure we've all got the uh, the emails at some time saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in outer Abyssinia uh, and I need £30,000 to get me back home. Can you ask all your friends and family? This is real, Gov, honest, I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, well, uh, the reality is it, you, sh you shouldn't be even responding. Just look at that and just delete it. Because you don't know what's involved in that. Even if even if it's not about you responding, there could be a virus attached to you opening a link, anything like that. So just don't do it. Um, uh, the basic rule of thumb is, is the same as it always has been when you're out shopping. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is, in all honesty. And, and don't impulse buy on something just because it looks great. Uh, always check it out, go in, and, uh, and then people phoning you up. Um, pretending to be people. There's some very, very clever people out there who spent a lot of time making a lot of money out of doing this sort of thing. So the the only real advice you can offer is um, if you're not sure, don't do it. Um, and if you're not sure, so I'll, I'll come back to you. If you don't want to say no, then just say, well, I'll come back to you. I need to check a few things first. Give me your phone number and I'll ring you back. And uh, Nine times out of ten, they'll just disappear. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the other thing is as well, if you get an email through you with a link or something attached to it and it doesn't look right, contact mm. the person and get them to check and check they've actually sent it to you because quite mm. often people can actually get into your emails and they can actually send emails as, as, as someone else. You click the link and a lot of malware goes onto your computer. So I think it's, mm. it's, it's people have got to be really careful about what they're... If it doesn't look right, just ask the person. And if they have genuinely sent it to you, then you can either delete it and then they can resend it or... Or you can just contact if they haven't sent it, delete it, don't open the link. I think that's it again. And the same with bank, you know, how many texts or messages you get from your, a bank, a bank that you aren't, you, you, you're not even banking with, saying we mm. want you know please key in your details. Um, and they're hoping that actually one of the emails actually looks like it's from your bank. So they send enough out mm. from all the different banks. Eventually they'll get a hit. If you're not sure, contact your bank. Contact the contact the fraud department at the bank. And just see. I think Sam's back now, so we can go back to Sam. Yeah. Thanks for that, Ivor. That little. Let me um... share the screen again. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh... Brilliant. Yeah. And the great tips, guys. I think. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you now, Sam. Can you hear me? Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yay! Brilliant. Some great advice on the cyber stuff there, and also. Um, uh, the National Cyber Crime uh, Centre has been sort of keeping an eye and a tab on the different scams out there. And a lot of them are definitely related to kind of COVID-19, click here for a health check and things like that. So that's definitely something to sort of pay attention to, really. So are we uh, sharing the, I mean, the slides aren't necessarily that important, to be honest. Um, uh, once they're up, then uh, I'll just talk you through some of this I already talked to, to you about uh, earlier. So um, as um, Ivor mentioned earlier, we have our site for parents uh, and we're trying to keep that up to date and add some more articles to that as we go along. Um, and as I said, um, so next slide, Iva, uh, we have been doing the online safety at home campaign. Um, so we have a whole page of home activity packs and every two weeks, that's for the different age groups, 15 minute activities that parents can do um, with their children. And then what we've started to do, um, next slide please, Ivor. Uh, we've also started to add um, some different ideas for parents and also some presentations for parents. So next slide please, Ivor. So, so far we've got, uh, you know, you've 
been so great uh, because you've got to have Ivor deliver the presentation for you today. Um, but we've created one online as well to kind of try and reach those people who don't have um, contact with our fantastic ambassadors. Um, so we just wanted to get some of the, that basic information out to people. And as I said, this week we've been con uh, focused on online uh, sharing of images. So there's two little videos there which specifically talk about how um, to talk to your children about sharing of images for secondary um, age group in particular, thinking about nude images. Um, so uh, again, some extra guidance for parents and carers around that. And then um, Ivor mentioned parent info. Um, so parent info is our um, shared uh, shared next slide, please, Ivor, is our shared account, uh, kind of a website we have with um, uh, parent info. Oh, no, I've got what parent told us first. Let's talk about what parents told us first. Um, probably like all of you. Um, so we kind of contacted parents and said, what's going on for you? How are you finding things? And so over this last kind of, it's what, 10 weeks now, um, you know, we wanted to find out if they needed any support from us. And this probably resonates with you, is that, you know, lots of parents are telling us that, that it's been great in having more opportunities to spend time together, to explore things together. And particularly, as you guys were just saying, um, that exploring technology together. Um, so it's been a really great opportunity to do that uh, over the last few weeks. But I think probably most parents' worries have been that thing around managing time, mental health and well-being. And if you think pre-lockdown, we were all talking about screen time and balance of screen time, and now don't really have the, those opportunities. So I think parents are very anxious about um, kind of, you know, juggling work and uh, parental responsibilities. So, you know, kudos to all parents out there because I think you're doing a grand job and, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, you're keeping your children safe and that's all that matters. Um, so one of the things that we've done is try to help with some of those those worries. Um, so next slide, this is comes in nicely, um, is our parent info site, which um, I've uh, talked about. Uh, we have a number of resources on there we've created specifically in response to COVID-19 and parents' worries. So um, under the health and safety, uh, sorry, the health and well-being, there's some stuff around dealing with mental health, how to talk to your children about their anxiety, thinking about those who might be going back to school, um, how to cope with uh, video conferencing. So there's lots of things there, I think, which... Um, uh, are there for parents to help and guide them and give them support and resources. So I would really urge you, if you have never seen it before, because I think many people don't often know about Parent Info, um, to have a look, because there we're talking about technology in a di digital world, not just in a practical sense, but also in the realities of kind of, like we say, the mental health and well-being we're all dealing with. So that's what we've been doing, and we're going to be running the uh, home activity packs until the end of school term specifically so the end of july uh so there'll be several more next week in two weeks we'll be talking about live streaming then we'll be talking about gaming and before we break up so to speak for the summer holidays um we will be talking about social media sharing you know what we've learned over this this last kind of period where actually all of our socializing has been online so watch out for those and please share them around because I think, you know, there's lots of great information in short bursts for people. Thanks, Sam. Um, really, really useful, really useful information from both Sam and I. What we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to take some take, have a look at the questions. We've been asked three questions. Um, so I know you've answered one on the on the on with a, with a, a link, Sam. But the first one really was there a reliable nanny system you can install to ensure children are not going on to places they shouldn't, as parental controls aren't always reliable. Did we do. So we had a little chat about this while you and uh, Ivor were uh, sorting out your technical uh, things. And just like Ivor said, is that well, parental controls and technical tools are useful. They're not the, you know, they're not the only thing. And building that relationship and talking to your kids is really important. Um, and we've shared a link there for some examples of parental uh, apps which can help to monitor. And as I said, I think this is really something which you should do as a training tool, so to speak, is that, you know, 
when kids get their first devices, they're brilliant. If you've got teenagers, probably not so much so because that means that, you know, you kind of don't necessarily want to be monitoring. You want them to feel that they can talk to you and they have trust in you. That's, that's great. Oh, Ivor, did you want to add any, any, anything around that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm not aware of any specific um, nanny site. I quite like that term, actually. Uh, <laughs> I think there is sites. one called nanny, uh, nanny actually. <laughs> Right, so I, I, I haven't I haven't come across any that, I, that I've seen that are um, particularly outstanding. There's a lot of stuff out there, but the, the reality is you you can't beat communicating with the child yourself. And that's the truth of it. And actually, uh, I'm I'm always a bit wary of using too much monitoring because you know what you were saying is you, you're not trusting your own child. And I'm not saying don't do it because it's your choice in, as an individual. My personal opinion is it's much better to communicate with the child and develop an honest relationship where you're not judgmental about what they do. And you don't lecture them, you talk to them and, 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 and work, work with them to develop some kind of safe system of work, if you like, around that. And that, that's the safest um, system that you can have is, is an honest, open relationship. But there are there is stuff out there. And, you know, if people choose to use it, then I'm sure there are some very good ones. I, I couldn't personally recommend any particular one um but yeah so that's it one of the um, things i would recommend um for those of you who've got children who are just getting their first phones is the bbc have an app called own it as well as a whole website around um kind of online safety for so it's designed for children who are getting their first phones and the bbc own it app allows you to download their app and it it kind of works is a um and AI and artificial intelligence. So you download a keyboard, mm. sorry, I'm action to you. And uh, <laughs> it gives the child prompts when they're typing things in, it asks them how they're feeling. So it's it's designed to kind of give them some autonomy, but also ask them questions. So for example, if they wanted to say something like, you're a silly cow, um, the, 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 the message which comes up saying, do you really want to say that? Because that doesn't sound very good. Um, it is really designed for first phone use. So if your children are already using phones and tablets proficiently, they probably won't want to use it. But it's a really great tool for autonomy. Great. Thanks for that. Um, I'm just getting up to the next question. The next, the next, the next question was, um, is there a link to, link to show parents and carers a step-by-step -step guide? to set up parental controls in case they're not familiar with technology themselves. Someone, uh, Vin, um, Vincent has actually asked, has, has put a, a link to that. Did you two want to comment on that and give any advice around that as well? So I think I added on, on the advice, I would always go to Internet Matters. So Internet Matters has what is a little pink house um, and it covers all the broadband, all the gaming devices, all the mobile phones, all the tablets, and they keep that up to date and have an, a step-by-step -step guide visually for parents on how to do that. So that, I mean, you can get step-by-step -step guides in lots of places, but I just always go there because I know that they're keeping that up to date. Thanks, Hi, Sam. You just, you just stole my thunder. This is exactly <laughs> oh, what I was going to say. It's fine. It's all right. You can yeah, go just... first next time. Yeah, no, no, not at all. No, no, by all means. No, that, that I, I would actually endorse that, actually. I mean, there are lots of different places out there, as with everything. Uh, but if you if you want one single resource, then I, I don't think you can actually go any better than Internet Matters. They're, nothing's perfect because new stuff is happening all the time and we're always playing catch-up. But if, if you if you want really good up-to-date uh, information, then that, that is the, the main site I would use personally. Great. Um, that's all the questions that have come in. I mean, I think the reason why we haven't had so many questions is that you've given, you've both given some fantastic information and advice for people to actually go away and think about. And there's some really great links that you've put up there to actually uh, for people to go and click on. And certainly, I'd recommend watching the videos. I know Ivor's Ivor done some events many years ago for me when we ran regional network meetings, and there's some really, really good quality videos that actually do actually show you how scary, how scary it really is but also give you the practical advice to be able then to, to resolve any issues that you've got. Um, we, we're coming towards the end of, end, end of this session, and there's no, no, more, no more questions. One of the things I'd just like to, to, to point out is that um, UnionLearn 
learning at home web pages have a number of modules on on there we have six free bite-sized learning uh, one of them is a safe video conference which is very important at the moment um, you've seen lots of issues around zoom and uh in the press uh you, there are other you know microsoft teams you can use instead there's also on the safe home working um five ways to well-being very important again for your mental health during this very stressful and difficult period that we've been in and also helping your kids learn at home as well. And there's lots of links and resources uh, to BBC and other things on there. Our next webinar is um, next Thursday, at a slightly later time uh, of two o'clock. And that's with Robin Graham. And it's it's laughter yoga, and it's about relieving stress through, through laughter. So we've had a very serious, very informative uh, webinar today. Next week's will be on a lighter note, but it's very, it, again, it comes, it comes back to wellbeing. I've attended some of Robin's sessions when he's running in workplaces and they are fantastic. So if, you, if you're interested in that, please do click on the link to register below or go to the Union Learn uh, web pages. Um, all I'd like to say now then is thank you very much to Ivor and Sam for such a thank fantastic you. webinar. And thank you all for staying with us and bearing with our technical problems, which seem to be an issue with webinars. But I think we got there in the end and thankfully we could get a lot of the information that both, both Ivor and Sam wanted to give us. So thanks a lot, and hopefully we'll see you at a future webinar. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Thank you.